Hello and welcome to this completely random Long Island Railroad video that uh, is just uh, some mostly scenes from the day. There's another Mercedes SUV. We're at Mineola uh, and, uh, you know, waiting for a train this afternoon. You can see all the clouds in the sky. Uh, I wanted to show you these diesels that were passing by. This was, uh, I was waiting for that uh, 149 Ron Conkham, a train from Penn Station. But uh, we had some diesels pass by, including this one here. Uh, I don't know, it was, it was behind a uh, local Huntington train. Uh, and uh, that was ahead of us, uh, and I don't know if that was a train to Montauk, I don't know if it was not in service, and then there was another one passing, uh, that was an eastbound, and here comes a westbound diesel as well, uh, that was uh, heading into Mineola, so yeah, there comes our train here, which is the 149 train uh, from Penn, it arrives at Mineola 224, because uh, I wanted to take it, this is an extra train that's being provided, uh, to Ronkonkoma, uh, but so far, as you'll see when I get on it, it wasn't that crowded, uh, just showing that, uh, that westbound, uh, diesel train, I don't know if it was not in service, or maybe a Montauk train traveling on the main line, a lot of Montauk trains use the main line, but they don't make any stops, which really is a shame, uh, they use the main line and then take that central line down to Babylon. So anyway, this is the train here, uh, the 149. Uh, it was empty. It wasn't too. It won't, hopefully, more people will discover. Usually, the Ronkonkoma trains are packed, but I guess people don't know about this train or whatever. We're traveling eastbound out of Mineola. I really wish that they would do something about the graffiti on some of these buildings here. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's an eyesore, and they really need to like paint over it right away. This is a problem along many parts of the Long Island Railroad, but in particular the main line. Um, you know, anywhere there's buildings that are facing the tracks, you have this graffiti. So this video, I'm going to like voice over the train ride, or at least parts of it. Uh, so, uh, you know, it was empty, so it was a nice peaceful ride out. Uh, it's going to be my longest narration yet. <laughs> uh, we passed by the WTHE uh, 1520 AM radio tower, which unfortunately is, uh, is uh, that radio station is off the air. So here we are. Approaching Westbury. Now, the good thing about this train, it doesn't have to stop in Westbury. Uh, so, uh, uh, that's the new Ellison Avenue Bridge right there. Uh, I'll just explain to you, for those who aren't familiar for, with the area, what we're passing through. So, we've passed uh, under the Ellison Avenue Bridge. We're in Westbury now, or Wastebury, uh, or L Wastebury, uh, however you want to call it. Uh, and there's uh, another train that's going to be passing by in westbound there. Uh, and that's Post Avenue there, dead, there's nobody around. Uh, everybody just looks miserable there. Well, you know, you I was miserable too when I had to live there. Just a miserable looking place. That used to be a fur place. They knocked that down, and now it's just their parking trucks there. It's just a bunch of illegal uh, apartments over there. Uh, like I said, lots of illegals in this area here. And we're passing, that's a school street there. And now we're passing, uh, uh, we're going to be passing on to Grand Boulevard next uh, here. So it's, again, pretty bleak area. So we'll be passing on to Grand Am Look at that building. That, that building is hard. That really is disgusting. It's just a wasteland. Now we're passing on to Grand Boulevard. So much graffiti. So much trash along the tracks. So you wonder how that even gets there. We're going a little slower than normal because we had that diesel in front of us. Uh, and in front of that diesel was the local Huntington train that did stop at Carl Place in Westbury. So a little bit of a, a backup here with the train. So normally we speed through here, uh, but we're going slow. So again, let, let me take a video, show you how this is Newcastle now, uh, which is the destiny for the rest of Westbury at this point. The rest of Westbury will become like Newcastle pretty much. And the next uh, landmark will be the Urban Avenue Crossing, which we should be coming up to. This will be the Urban Avenue Crossing, I believe. Uh, usually we fly through here, but we're going very slow, again, because of that train traffic ahead of us. Uh, yeah, really uh, depressing, crappy neighborhood. Uh, <laughs> Newcastle is just, this is where a lot of those, uh, you know, dreamers wound up, you know, that Nancy Pelosi spent eight hours on. Many of them gang members uh, brought a lot of problems, a lot of problems, and that really did finish off, finished off Westbury, finished it off. It's done. It's completely ruined. Anyway, we're looking at something nicer coming up now in just a second here. East of Farmingdale, you start seeing the pines come in. 
uh, once you get past east of Farmingdale Station, that track over there, you see that third track, that's like a, a siding where they park trains sometimes that start at Farmingdale or end at Farmingdale. Uh, and we'll be crossing over Route 110. There's a little ride on the Ronkonkoma line to Deer Park this afternoon. Uh, not the best sky, but that's Route 110 right there. We crossed over Route 110. That's where the Republic Station used to be. They plan on rebuilding the Republic Station uh, when the double track project is complete. So we're passing by some, like, uh, I don't know, some sand mine or whatever. I don't know what that is. It looks like a sand mine or uh, maybe it's an asphalt plant. This is where they make pavement or concrete. Um, that's been there for ages. <laughs> uh, and I know they have some freight trains that come through here too. New York and Atlantic. You, you'll see one that's parked right over there. Again with the graffiti, but there's one that's uh, parked. Uh, you don't see the locomotive. And there are those beautiful pines there passing through Pine Lawn. Uh, these beautiful pitch pines, a lot of them old pitch pines like you'd see in New Jersey, passing through. So that's part of the reason why the Ronkonkoma line is my favorite, because you get to pass through all these pines. Uh, you know, it's really just, uh, it's just literally just, literally I was sitting on the train maybe 15, 20 minutes, and we're already, from Mineola, and we're already in this beautiful piney scenery here. Uh, so we'll be coming up on Pine Lawn Road crossing and the Pine Lawn Station. This train does not stop. This 149 does not stop at Pine Lawn, so we don't stop there. We go right through with some more beauties, and we are passing through Pine Lawn now. Uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful cemetery. Uh, you know, for, you know, a great. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know. Uh, you know, I'm too young to think about it, but, uh, you know, uh, it's a really nice place to have your final resting place at. You know, that whole area is just, just beautiful. Uh, all those beautiful pitch pines. Uh, and you see here we got more, just a forest here, a stand of pure pitch pines. Uh, and another one right there, another big beauty. And the next crossing we're coming up is Little Neck Road, I believe. Little Neck Road. I think it's Little Neck Road. Uh, this will be the next great crossing coming up and then this area here which is like I don't know what that is that piece of property over there but it's beautiful I mean uh, it's it's an on developing it's owned by Pine Lawn but it's on developed uh, and it's just beautiful lots of beautiful pines in there and uh, just beautiful look at that you can see them you can see them as we pass by so it's really nice really nice and now we go into the wine dance neighborhood which is another troubled ghetto neighborhood in fact it was in the news uh... the other there was a video uh... there was a bas basketball game and uh... At wine dance uh, in southampton and they uh, when the, there was a foul and the, and, the, and the coaches misbehaved they ended the game and there was a whole big fight there this is what I mean. This is the ghetto, and people, they just act like they're, they're hoodlums. They're hoodlums. It's sad. It really is sad, but th this is this is a wine dance uh, here now. Uh, I'm in the front of the train, so uh, that's a straight path uh, that we're going to be crossing next, but I'm in the front of the train, which does not actually make on the platform. They're doing construction, so only the rear car's platform, uh, as you'll see. That's the winding, rising so-called project. No trendy people, are, no millennials are moving here. It's the ghetto. No, uh, They're especially not going to want to live in the ghetto. Uh, that that is, that is a pretty much a ghost town over there. It's unfortunate, but that is a failure, just like anything that's been done on Post Avenue. So you see, the platform is gone on the front here uh, in Windanch. So coming up, we are now at Deer Park Rail. And I just want to show you the this jerk here. I was walking past. Look at what this jerk did. He parked on the... You think he's not supposed to park there, but I guess he's got a Mercedes. So I guess he can park wherever he wants. Uh, and I want to show you. See, this is what they need to do. This is where they need to put solar panels. See all the parking lots here? Yeah, they have the solar panels here. I have all the parking lots here. Um, there was a lot of wind, so again, you couldn't hear me talk. And here we are in this little area of Pine Barrens, just across from the train station. It's beautiful, but it's not protected. It's not preserved, unfortunately. And I worry that they're going to try to eventually develop this pro piece of property. Hopefully not. You see the sky is just hazy, and it's not very not, not a very nice sky today. Very hazy, not a really nice deep blue sky. Uh, the pines are still beautiful, though. Uh, 
I'll show this other spot here. So this is another spot. You see a cloud is over the sun. So yeah, not a really nice sky today, but a uh, this is a beautiful little spot right across from the train station. So uh, I wanted to show that to you. It's really uh, really important that we preserve this spot here and uh, protect it because it is uh, really important. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful spot here. Beautiful pine barrens and really should be added to the Edgewood Preserve, which is right next door. Uh, you see the sky is just, yeah, you know, hazy. Is a lot, like I said, a lot of moisture that's uh, in the atmosphere that's causing all that haze and all these clouds to pop up because this isn't really dry air. It's sort of Pacific air. It's not really dry air, so that's why you have that junky sky. And you can see it just kind of washes out the colors of everything. Uh, that's part of the reason why I don't like going when the sky is junky, but I need to do because this is the sun ain't gonna be out for like five days after this, so Hattie, you see the train station's right over there, so uh, it's just beautiful though. So now we're back on the train heading back, uh, looking at all those beautiful pines, beautiful pines, uh, and we're now heading back, so this will be the same view but going back, so. Uh, that's the uh, looking toward Edgewood Preserve as we head back, looking on the north side of the tracks, on the north side again. And here we go, leaving Wine Danch, uh, and we picked up some people that were kind of loud in the car, so again, that's why I'm not, you know, you're not hearing the ambient sounds. There are some beautiful pitch pines here, and it's, this neighborhood's always been trouble, though, Wine Danch, it's always been kind of crappy. Uh, it's always been having problems, unfortunately. There are some beautiful old pitch pines here, though. The pitch pines aren't afraid of the thugs, <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, most people would be. Well, pitch pines are brave and strong, and, you know, <laughs> can I say, but there are a lot of beautiful pitch pines. So you could see there are some pines that might have some southern pine, but you see some, also some of the tr tr construction area for, related to the double track project. We're passing through that beautiful area again that is uh, undeveloped, uh, that is uh, east of Pine Lawn, I, I think is owned by Pine Lawn. But it's a beautiful little spot there, for sure. We're passing by that. We're going to be crossing again over Little Neck. I think it's Little East Neck Road uh, crossing. Uh, so we'll be passing over that. There you go. Passing over that. And that looks like another little sand mine there or whatever, right in the that's on the other side there, and then there's Pine Lawn again, so we're passing through Pine Lawn. Uh, yeah, beautiful, just beautiful. I love all these pines. I mean, it's just beautiful. Uh, you know, I, I just think it's... I love Pine Barrens, so I want to make more videos on the Pine Barrens. You know, it, it, to me it is the most... even if most people aren't interested in it, uh, to me it is, is, is a beautiful, beautiful place. Now, the train I'm on this time uh... does stop at Pine Lawn going back uh... so uh... this train does stop at Pine Lawn you'll see you do actually stop here uh... and the front of the train will open because I'm in the front now of the train so the first at Pine Lawn the first two cars open and you'll see that they put a new platform in the platform used to be on the south side but not anymore now it is on the north side uh... The, this is a because the south side is where the second track gonna, is going so they're going to build another platform over there, but in the meantime, they are using the north side platform, which is this right here, as you see. So here we go, leaving the station. You see they have that like temporary ramp there. It's Pine Lawn Road. You see all the construction equipment. So I I'm very pleased with the progress of the double track project. I can only hope that the mainline third track project moves along as smoothly, because uh, double track has moved along very smoothly, and it is actually ahead of schedule and under budget. For once, something is going right uh, with the construction. So again, we're looking at these pines. Beautiful pines here. And some oaks, too, but beautiful pines. At the sky, you can see the sky is just, yuck, you know. It's not a nice-looking sky. So it's really uh, just a crappy, hazy-looking. Uh, my phrase is junky. is junky-looking sky. Uh, some more pines here. Of course, as we pass through Pine Lawn. Um... So you'll see that. Um, and more of those beautiful old pitch pines. There's that freight train again. This is New Highway, I believe. I believe that's the New Highway crossing. And there's a nice little view over here. 
Actually, you can see the uh, toward the hills. I try to zoom in a little and show you. But there's that big hill. There's a big tower over there. Uh, it's actually an old Beth page. There's a big. Uh, I think it was used by AT and T at one time. A big tower there. We're crossing over Route 110. And that uh, there's Lowe's, and right next to it, by the way, is the headquarters. You'll see right there. You see the PC Richard building there. That's that. That is actually the headquarters for PC Richard and Son. Do not shop at PC Richard and Son. They're overpriced on everything. And they're they're. I actually I the the first digital camera I got. It's a long story, but the first one I ever got, which was a Minolta, was a Lemon when I bought it, and they gave me such a hard time for exchanging. Literally, I had to fight them for almost a year to get them to exchange that thing. So. PC Richardson, don't buy your stuff there. All right, uh, so we're coming into Farmingdale now, and you see there will be a lot of people waiting for this train at Farmingdale as we pull into Farmingdale, uh, which is a busy station. So we are pulling in again. I'm in the front of the train, so you'll see a lot of people waiting here as we get uh, get in here. And Farmingdale is one of those towns that a lot of snobs have moved into, so you might see some people that might be, you know, they're dressed like they could be snobs. I can't say for sure, but, you know, some people have, a, have that preppy look a little bit, so Farmingdale seems to be one of those towns that has gotten uh, a lot of preppy people in it. Uh, it never used to be like that five years ago, but it's changed a lot. Uh, you'll see, you really can't see too well here. <laughs> uh, but we're pulling into Farmingdale here. Uh, which well, which really needs it's a busy station. They really should have a canopy. I don't know why they don't have a canopy. Why does only the Babylon branch get canopies? So here we are. I'm standing on the south end. You can see those there are all those luxury apartments they built again uh, for you know only snobby rich only for rich people. You know 2,500 rent starting at 2,500 and up, folks. Uh, you know that, that's people. This is not what Long Island needs. Long Island needs more affordable housing. But that's that's what I mean. That's what Farmingdale wants. They just want to have more snobs there. Uh, that's okay. Uh, I like Mineola better anyway, way better. I don't want Farmingdale. It's one of the towns I was looking at, but Mineola is way better. We have better train service, uh, much better train service than Farmingdale. Farmingdale's a little lacking in the transportation department. So I think we're looking now, and we're coming into Beth Page. So show you Beth Page here very briefly. Show you Beth Page. Uh, coming in, crossing over. Yep. I remember the N81. That's gone. <laughs> remember the N81 used to go right down there. Nope. Now you got to take the train if you want to get to that spot, because that was discontinued. Thanks, nice bus. Uh, speaking of nice bus, I may want to talk about one of the things regarding nice at the end of this video. So after that, that's it. I, these are just random scenes here that I have coming up from the Long Island Railroad that weren't taken tonight. I think I'm gonna. I actually have to go over them. This is actually Wine Dance. Yeah, this is actually the Wine Dance station. This was back in January. I want to show you all the people getting off at Wine Dance and how busy the station is here. So we have a lot of people getting off. Uh, there's a lot of people. And the train's kind of crowded, too. You see there's still some people standing. Uh, so this was taken, I think, in uh, early January or late December. Uh, so I just want to show you how crowded the Ronkonkoma train is in rush hour. It's packed. I mean, literally, it's packed. Um, so, uh, yeah, you see how packed. Again, this wasn't taken the night. This was taken another night, I think, uh, back in late December. Uh, the back's not as crowded. And here's another Ron Conkama train in Hicksville. I want to show you how crowded this one is. And this train is like this every night. It's jammed, packed. Look at that. This is it leaving Hicksville. So you imagine how jam-packed it was before it stopped at Hicksville? Literally, there were people standing throughout the whole train. Uh, and this is, I think, a train that comes into Hicksville around 7 o'clock, uh, going east toward Ronkonkoma, and that train is jammed. That's a jammed train right there. So, again, this is what the folks in the Babylon branch don't have to deal with. Uh, and I think we have another clip of another train coming through uh, Hicksville, I think. Uh, I think I have another clip. Yes, this is a Port Jefferson train at Hicksville. Look at how crowded that train is. So, again, this is the way the main line is at rush hour. It's crowded. Well, meanwhile, people on the Babylon branch, they have a seat next to themselves. Well, yeah, that train, yeah, that train don't have any seats. It doesn't look like it anyway. Okay, lastly, I just want to talk about Nice Bus because, yeah, it was another missing bus tonight. I actually saw the 620 N22 from Hicksville. Never showed up. There were a lot of people waiting here. 
Uh, and they're going to have to wait for the 643, I think, was in the next is the next one that's supposed to show up after that. So another missing bus. This still nice is still having problems. I just don't ride it anymore. I don't want to deal with it anymore. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I don't, I can't, Laura Curran has disappointed me, but it's just the same thing. The only pe- it doesn't matter whether it's Laura Curran or who it is running this damn county. All they care about are the rich people in their fancy cars. They don't care about what bus riders are going through. And I think Laura Curran is one of those snobby people. I think Jack Martins would have done a better job. I still think Jack Martins would have done a better job for nice bus riders. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to continue to endure this and, I just have to avoid riding the bus. For those that don't have a choice, uh, my my heart goes out to you. You're going to continue to deal with these problems with no-show buses uh, due to all the breakdowns uh, until MTA comes back. Uh, But who knows when that's going to happen. Anyway, that's it.